Hello and welcome to a video on AC steady state analysis. More specifically, we're looking at nodal analysis with the example shown there. We first redraw it to indicate the various impedances. We have relabeled the inductors and capacitors with their respective impedances. How do we decide on the impedances of the inductors and capacitors? Well, we know the amplitude and frequency of our source. As you can see, I've labeled them there in the orange. The frequency is merely two. Omega is two. So we have no phase angle. How do we know we have no phase angle? Well, as you can see for an example, if we had a phase angle, it would be a consistent and constant angle added to our 2T. So it's pretty straightforward. The phase is zero for our two sources and the frequency is omega equals two. Now the complex numbers that we're showing you there, we only are using the imaginary part. So it would be zero plus one J or zero minus 0.5 J because there is no real part on the inductor or the capacitor. And conversely, the resistor has a real part, but no imaginary part. So that is one plus zero J. Now the formula that you use to calculate the J value or imaginary value from the inductor is just omega L as shown. And the formula that you use for the capacitor is one over omega C. So you just plug in your values and that is where the numbers come from. The next stage is to combine the capacitor and inductor that are in parallel into one impedance and to combine the resistor and the inductor into another impedance. How do we do that? Well, as we're showing you, it's pretty straightforward. We simply have a real part and an imaginary part. And we have to multiply them together and divide them by their sum. So you really need to watch that video on operations on complex numbers. But the equations are pretty straightforward because we just use Kirchhoff's current law at V1 and V2. And there are three terms in the first one and three terms in the second one. Now we show you there how we can turn the denominator into its reciprocal. That's the purpose of the orange there. One over negative J is the same as multiplying by J as shown there in the orange. So we multiply out the brackets and then we collect up terms and rearrange the equation as shown in the green. Here is the other equation. And we show you how to find the reciprocal there in red of 1 over 0.2 plus 0.4j.
In reality, as you can see, we realize the denominator by squaring and the two terms and adding them. So study the algebra carefully. Next thing we've done is to remove the denominator and multiply by the reciprocal as shown in the purple. And finally, we collect up terms just like we did. And we have equation two. So we have equation one and two, and we're going to solve it using Kramer's rule. So we rearrange our determinant matrix for V1 and V2. And we show you there the steps to how to find the determinant of the matrix. And it works out to the real number five. Next, we need to insert our constants into the determinant matrix for V1 and for V2. And the colors show you there how we do it. We replace one column with the constants and we replace the other column with the constants and we divide by the determinant. And when we're finished with that, we have the solution to V1, V2. Now the solution is in the rectangular form of the complex number. So we need to find the polar form. And this clearly shows how we do that. And after we have found the polar form, we see that we do have a phase angle on each of the voltages. And the time, do time domain solution is just inserting the amplitude and the phase angle for V1 and V2. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.